Hi everyone, this is Aria and I hope you're doing well. In this tutorial, I want to show you how I made this looping animation using geometry nodes. First, we can just get rid of the light and the camera, select the default cube, then just head down to the left and when you see the plus sign, you can click and drag to add a new window. Select here and head into the geometry node editor, then click new. Since we're using a spiral curve as our base, we can just delete our group input. Next, we can hit Shift A. I'm just going to go to search, type in spiral, and add a curve spiral. Then just connect this to the group output. Then to get this spiral to look the way we want it, we just have to change a couple things. So first, let's set the rotations to 3. We can leave the start radius just as it is. And for the end radius, we're going to type in minus 0.1. Now we have the base for our animation. The next thing that we need to do is to give our curve some thickness. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert to a mesh by hitting shift A and then you can just search for curve to mesh. Then we can just drop that in. We still need to add a profile for our curve. In this case, I want to use a square shape. So we're going to hit shift A, then head to curve primitives and we can select quadrilateral. Then we're just going to hook our curve into the profile. You'll notice that it's quite large. I'm just going to change the width to 0.12 and the height to 0.03. Now we have a basic mesh. The next thing that we're going to add is a node called split edges. So shift A and search for split edges. Then once we drop this in, you'll see now it's basically gone through and split up all of our edges. Next, we need to add a node called scale elements. You can use this node to scale either the face or the edges. And in this case, we just want to use the face. Next, we can click here and type in 0.95. You'll see now that if I zoom in, all of our faces have been scaled down by 0.95. If I was to mute both of these nodes and go back to what we had before and just use the scale elements, you'll see that it scales our entire object. When we use the split edges node, what it'll do is take each face and scale it individually. The next thing we want to do is take each of our faces and extrude them out. So we're going to hit shift A and search for extrude mesh. Let's click here and type in 0.05. So what we did was just added a square shape to our profile curve. Then we split it up into individual faces. Then we just scaled them down a little bit just so that there's room in between each. Then we took each one of those faces and scaled it out by 0.05. This looks a little bit weird and it's just because there's not a lot of geometry to work with. So the next node that we can add is a subdivide mesh node. And if we drop this in, put this up to three, you'll see that these are looking a lot nicer now. We can also take this a little bit further by hitting shift A and adding a subdivide surface node and just dropping that immediately after. Just keep in mind that using both of these nodes will slow your computer down a little bit. We only really need these for the final render, so I'm just going to set this down to 2, and then I'm just going to hit M to mute our subdivision surface, just so that things work a lot quicker while we're creating. Now that we've got all of our separate faces, what we need to do is affect the scale of these faces. The idea that we want to get is having something move along our curve and scale as it goes along. In this case, we can just use a basic icosphere. And just so that we can see what we're doing, I'm just going to add a join geometry node. This is only temporary, but it just gives us a visual of what we're doing. This is quite large, so I'm just going to set the radius to 0.1 and you'll see that it kind of goes right in the center here. The next thing that we want to do is have our icosphere follow along with our curve. The way we do that is by using a set position node. So we can hit shift A, type in set and then select set position. And we just want to drop that right after the icosphere. We need to add in one more node. So hit shift A and we're going to type sample curve. Then if we take our curve output and hook it into the curve, you'll see now that we're able to get information about our position, tangent, and normals. In this case, we want to use our position and we can hook that directly into the offset. As soon as I do that, you'll see that our icosphere jumps to the beginning of our curve. I'm going to set this to factor just because now we can use a value between 0 and 1 to move our icosphere. And you'll see as I move this up and down, it travels up and down the curve. 
Now that we have this set up, we can now use the Icosphere to affect the scale of our mesh. The next node that we want to add is a scale elements node. So shift A and type in scale and drop it in at the end here. What we want to do is use the position of our Icosphere to affect the scale of our mesh. What we need to do is use another node that will take our position and allow us to use it for the scale. The quick way to do that is using the geometry proximity node. You'll notice if I drop this in here, it kind of cuts the line here. The reason why is again, this line here is just a preview, so we don't even really need this, but I'm just going to hook it up for now just so that you can see where the icosphere is. Now we can use our distance output and connect that to the scale. Then if I was to move this factor, you'll see that we're starting to get what we want. So what we need to do is clamp this a bit and have a way to control the influence. One of the ways we can do that is by adding a map range and then just dropping that in. You'll see right away that this is looking a lot better, but you'll notice that our sphere is still affecting other parts of our mesh. So what I'm going to do is just change this a little bit and change our from max to 0.5. Now you'll see that the influence is a lot smaller and it's now only affecting the faces right near the icosphere. If I was to unhook our icosphere for a bit, you'll still notice that our faces scale down to zero and that's not really what we want. So we're just going to use our from min, bring this down to negative 0.2 just so that our faces don't scale all the way to zero. Again, if you want to use this just to see where your icosphere is, you can do that. But for now, I'm just going to delete this. Now that we've got our basic setup, we can animate our factor. So just make sure to set the factor to zero on the sample curve node. As well, make sure you're on frame one. Then you can right click and insert a keyframe. You'll see that even though we set a keyframe, it's not really showing up in our timeline, even if we select our node. So what we need to do is just go to the outliner here and just select our cube. Then you'll see that our keyframes show up. Then we can just click here to jump to the end point. Head back to our factor and type in 1, right click and insert a new keyframe. Now if I hit play, you'll see that it's animating along our curve. It kind of starts slow and you'll notice at the end here it also starts slowing down. So what we want to do is just change the interpolation mode of this node. So let's select our curve. Again, if you're not seeing your keyframes, make sure to select the cube. Make sure that you've got both keyframes selected. Hit T and select a linear. Now that we have our basic animation, we can start adding a bit of complexity to it by having our faces move away from our curve as the icosphere passes by. The way we can do that is by adding a set position node. So I'm just going to move this over a little bit, hit shift A and type in set, then select set position and just drop it in here on our top line. Since we're using the icosphere to affect our position, we can just select this distance output and hook it into the offset. This isn't at all what we want, so we're just going to add another map range node just so that we can control this a little bit more. You'll notice that it kind of looks like it's doing nothing right where the icosphere is and affecting everything else. So what we want to do is just invert our influence. So I'm going to select 2 min and type in 1 and then set the 2 max to 0. So I'm just going to change the from min a little bit as well as the max. But it's still not looking great. If I hit play, it's kind of doing this large like worm type thing. And again, this is way too strong. So we're going to add a couple more nodes. And the first is just a basic math node. So shift A and type in math. Then we can drop this in here and we want to select the power option. We can just set our exponent to somewhere around 3. Now it's more isolated to just where we want it to be. You'll notice as the icosphere moves along, it's kind of just pushing everything upwards. In our case, of course, we want these to be pushed out based on the normal. A quick way to do that is to add a vector math node. Then we can switch this to multiply. Then we can add a normal node and hook this into our vector. Now you'll see if I hit play as the icosphere moves along, it's pushing everything outward. I also have a cylinder running up the middle, so I'm just going to quickly show you that it's more or less the same as what we've been doing. So I'm just going to run through it super quick. So hit shift A. We're going to add an additional curve to mesh. Then we can just use our original curve and bring this down and give it a profile as well. I'm just going to hook this up to our join geometry just so that we can see what we're doing. 
I'm just going to remove this line for now. This is again way too large, so let's just change the radius. Now you'll see we've just added a mesh to our basic curve. What we want to do is affect the radius of this curve based on the position of our icosphere. So we need to add one more node, which is a set curve radius node, and we can just drop that in right before the mesh. You'll notice that our curve disappears and it's just because our radius is so small. So again, we can just use our geometry proximity node and connect the distance to the radius. Now, if I hit play, you'll see that it's very thin where our icosphere is traveling, so we just want to flip that. Let's just use a super simple method, which is adding a color ramp, then just dropping that right in between our set curve and our proximity nodes. Then, all we need to do is flip the two handles. You'll notice that it's affecting it in other places, so you can just use this to change the influence a bit, but this isn't going to matter all that much because it's going to be hidden regardless. Then if I hook our original mesh back up, you'll see now it looks like it's pushing through. The final thing that we want to do is just rotate our entire curve so we can add one more node right before our initial spiral and it's just a simple transform node. Then we can head back to frame 1, right click our Z rotation and insert a single keyframe. Then we just want to head to the final frame, hit our arrow key to go one more frame and we're going to type in 360. Right click and insert another keyframe. Let's set the interpolation to linear as well by hitting D and selecting linear. Now if I hit play, you'll see that we've got our final animation. You'll notice that if I let this play through right at the end, it kind of snaps back into place and same with the beginning. So for my animation, I added a few extra nodes to get the look that I wanted. As well, you'll notice the faces aren't moving straight out from the normals, they're kind of bending. So if you want to see how I did that, you can head over to my Patreon page and sign up to become a member. You'll get the file that I used to create the final animation, as well as all the lighting and materials that I used. You'll also get a bunch of other blend files from my past tutorials, and of course you'll be supporting me in growing the channel. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!